Hello, so you welcome to Care Ma Freak. In this video, I'm showing you something really exciting, guys. I love this outfit. So it's a dress, but it has these drape details in front of it that makes it look really nice. I first saw this design on, I think, Nello KK, who is a YouTube content creator, a popular Portacot YouTube content creator. And I just loved it. I, th I think it was a piece made by whether Pretty Little Things or Shein or something like that. It's a foreign brand. So I love that drape detail. But I went ahead to create another design for the bodies of mine. So we'll be trying that out. Guys, practice make perfection. So I did a little practice on my mini dress form. You may want to do the same thing when creating yours. I made this little one here. And that helped me a great deal when I was now making the final piece. So it's good to practice a little bit before you do something so you don't waste so much fabric and your work can come out really perfect. So I discovered two ways to do this. You can drape and tack after working on your pattern, of course, or you can actually sew it down. Well, you'll see all of that in the tutorial. Thank you for joining us on this video. If you are new here, my name is Kemi Morube. Please do wait to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and let's get to work right away. Here is the basic bodies block. I have a tutorial for this on the channel where you can watch how to create this. This is the back block, and this is the front block. I use the bust that technique and I still have my waist that right here. So for the bodies, I won't be doing much modification for this style. I will just be creating like a little detail here. I'll come downward by three inches and just create something round here, an opening basically. So just an opening here. So for the bodies, the two sides are symmetrical. I'll cut this out right now so that I can transfer my dart. Now, you can make use of your bust dart if you want, but personally, I will be transferring this to the waist so that I can have a wider dart along the waist. And that way, I won't have to sew a bust dart. Now here is the front basic bodies block. I actually continued recording without knowing that my camera stopped recording. So now I want to transfer the boss dart to the waist and I slash through the dart line on the waist to open up here so I can close up the bust dart. So that way I have transferred my dart here. I will just tape this down and we have just the bust dart. Now, just so I can explain this step properly, I'm going to lay this on a paper and tape it down. Then we'll add seam allowance to these darts. Now, the original waist that I have here, I made use of 1.5 inches or 1.5 inch and that means 0.75 on both sides. Now I want to create a dart here that has allowance. You know our dart is wider now. We have from here to here. We have from here to here. So what I'm going to do is just make half half inch mark. This is what we serve as our same allowance. I'm going to stop about one inch below the bust point so that we don't have that part too sharp. So. I need half an inch allowance to sew back the dart. So every other part I have left, I'll cut it out because I don't need it. Okay, so now this is what we have for the front block and we are good to go with this. Now here is the pattern for the back. I'm not making any modification on this. I tightened the back as we usually do, 
and that's just it for this back. I'm not making any modification. Now, bulk of the work for this tie lies on the skirt part. You know, we are making a draped skirt. Now, here is the pattern for the skirt part. We have the skirt pattern for the back, and we have the skirt pattern for the front. So because the design I'm creating is not symmetrical, so I need a full front block and the full back block so that I can then modify it anyhow I want without um, having any issue. So the front piece is on fold. Why for the back? Because of the zip allowance, you have two separate pieces. Now let's open up this front piece, okay? So for the front piece, I want to create a drip along one side, along the left side specifically. So I measured four inches from the center to mark out a line here. Let me highlight it just in case this is not very visible on the camera. There's a tutorial already on the channel if you want to learn how to draft a basic skirt block. Now my skirt block is in the fitted type, okay? I didn't come inward here by two inches from the measurement for the hip and all that. I just use the same measurement for the hip line and the hem because I'm not going for something very tight. We want some freedom and some ease below. But you can actually try it with a fitted one. Let's see how it goes. So really, I'm not very sure about that part. On a second thought, there's really no harm in trying, right? So let's try that, let's try that. So I'm coming inward here by two inches and I'll just draw a straight, I'll draw a straight line to the hip to connect this. So I'll do the same thing for the back as well. We should not be afraid to make a mistake, right? I'll let you know how this works and if I will advise against it when you're practicing or not. Let me make the mistake so that you don't have to make the same mistake. Okay, now this part is quite interesting. So please watch and pay attention to everything we'll be doing from now onwards. Now I will open up the front piece and open up the two pieces and place them side by side. Let me start with this part so that we can have enough space to work on. This is the back. I'm sure it's not full on the screen, but please just try and follow me. So I'm going to tape these two together like this. That was why I made use of a straight line. So we'll tape these two together. I'll do the same thing on the other side to the other side of the back. So don't lap them over the other so that it doesn't alter your measurement. Just place them side by side. So when you are drafting your pattern, make use of straight lines so that it will be easy for you to place one side by side with the other. Now we'll repeat the same process for the other side, but let's treat this one for now. Now what I will do now is to split here, open, so that I can treat my pieces as two separate pieces. And since I'm even having challenge with the space here, that will make it easier. Now on this side as well, I'll place the side here and tape together. Now note that the pattern I created is actually dartless. I didn't make use of that. It's just a dartless skirt pattern. I didn't make use of any dart, both for the back and for the front. The reason I didn't do that is because it's um, relatively free outfit. You're not going for tight fitting. We're even still going to add fullness to make it even freer. You get what I mean? So that way, uh, I didn't need I'm finding it a little bit challenging here because of the slant. I guess it's not as straight as I wanted it to be. I don't know why I didn't just cut a straight band and just tip it once instead of all of these pieces. I'm trying to be economical. Okay, so now let's set this aside first and treat this 
huge one. Now you have some decisions to make. You have to decide on how low you want the front slit. It's not really a slit anyway, but there's an opening at the front. So you decide on how low you want it to go. I have decided to work with uh, 18 inches. I just hope this is not too much. <laughs> so I don't want to, I don't want to expose much. So I think I'll go with 18 or 17. Okay, let me go with 18 because it will be easier for me to shorten it than for me to, you know, increase the length if I'm not satisfied with it. Now from here, you are going to create a new hem. So you're going to create a curve. Just use your creativity here, really. That will blend into the back of the skirt. For things like this, I like to make use of a pencil first. But I don't really have a pencil here, so I just have to use a pen still. Or we'll just work with dotted lines and see how it goes. So this will form the rounded hem of the outfit. Okay, I think I have something here. You can use your, your pen to smoothen out the curve and make use of your curve. But I think I trust my hand at this point. I'll trust my hand. So yes, we have this now. When I'm cutting, finally, I will have to notch this point just so I know exactly where to end my sewing. Now it's time to create slash lines on the pattern. And this will determine the fullness of the skirt at the end of the day. So I'm making my slash lines like one, one inch apart or two, two inches. Let's make it two, two inches apart. Okay, let's see how this goes, but let's start with the first one. Now I want the first one to pass through here so that I can close up the side. Even when you're drafting your pattern, you can ensure that here will be straight. I think I made use of a curve, but I can still straighten it up so that it will be easy for me to, you know, tape the two sides together. Okay. Okay, now we have our first slash line that extends up to this point. And we'll go ahead to draw out other slash lines and extend them to the center back. So I kind of raised this to 17 inches. I know, I know I was skeptical about making it high, but I left it at 17 inches. We have this. I'll go ahead to slash the first one so that I can close up the side. So that I can close up this side like so. Then I can go ahead to slash and spread the other ones. So you slash and leave about one inch, eighth of an inch at the zip allowance, and then you just spread it a little bit there. Now we actually like to exclude the zip allowance for now. So let me cut out the zip allowance so that we don't have a longer zip allowance than we aimed for. So I'm cutting out one inch from my center back so that all the spreading will just be on the main outfit. And when I'm cutting out, I can then add the zip allowance. Now 
now I have slashed each of the slash lines and spread by 2.5 inches. You can make it wider depending on the fullness you are aiming for. And this is what we have. So I didn't want to be moving this pattern around. That was why I just decided to cut this piece before continuing with the other side. So this is what the entire <laughs> build up looks like. You can see here it's very wide, so I'll create like three plates around here. So when cutting, you have to add one or half an inch allowance here. So you can see my blue chalk that I used to mark it. Now I'll go ahead to sew. Also don't forget that at the center back we removed our zip allowance when we we're spreading. Now I'm going to add back that zip allowance because I didn't want the zip allowance to be part of the spread. That way the zip allowance will be longer than it is supposed to be. I don't know if you get me, but yeah. While cutting now, I'll be cutting one inch zip allowance at the back. I'll add half an inch allowance at the waistline and one inch all the way down here. That's, it will serve as the hemming allowance. Now once you're done cutting, don't forget to notch the part where you're stopping the pleating. At this point, you can go ahead to pleat actually so that you relieve yourself of stress later on. So I'll do that for this piece. And you can measure the length of your pleat as well when, when you're done pleating, just so you can be sure you have the length you want. Remember mine was 17 inches, right? Yeah. So pleating while your paper is still on can actually help make the job easier because okay, because you know that you have to pleat the space in between each strip. So that way. At this stage, you can even decide to modify it. If you want it shorter, you pleat more and all that. Actually, we like mine to lap a little bit more. So now I stopped at this point. You can go ahead to measure the length you have. I doubt if I have up to 17 inches I wanted. This is about 15, 16 inches actually. And I think I'll leave it that way. The reason I'm having this is because I lapped my pleats much more than I had planned, but it just felt right. So at this point you can remove your paper and go ahead to sew down this side so that it does not get, um, you know, you don't lose your pleat. So I'll just remove my paper now and proceed to work on the other side. Now here is the other side of the skirts and I have drawn the slash line just like we did for the other side. So I'll slash here and tip it back this way. Now I'll go ahead to cut through and spread the other slash lines. Okay, now before I forget, you're going to have to make here curvy as well, just like you did on the other side. So just create a curve 
up to the point where you marked. I still marked 17 inches here, by the way. So, okay. Now I have opened up my slash lines and spread by 2.5 inches like I did for the front. I want to go ahead to cut this out. Now just like we did for the first one, you can go ahead to pleat. And for this one, I'll be creating only two pleats here because it is shorter or smaller than the first one. Now here is the left and this is the right side of our fabric. Before I continue, I should have mentioned this earlier on that you must make use of a fabric that drapes easily. You cannot use just any fabric for this. Actually, you probably can. There's nothing wrong with giving it a try with maybe Ankara or something like that. But generally, you should use a fabric that drapes easily. And also, once you're done painting, ensure that the length for each side corresponds with the other so that when you're sewing together, you won't have any issue another thing to note is that there are two ways you can go about this you can pleat the way i have pleated then you sew the two pieces together or you can sew the two pieces together first up to the point where you nudged then you pleat or maybe even drip instead of sewing i don't know if you get what i mean that was the method I used on my first sample here. Guys, I did this for a trier. This is my mini dress form. And I did this for a trier. And I hope you can see this properly, but yes. So for this one, I sealed the two sides together and I actually made use of the center, not the side like the one we're making. So this one, I used the center and I sealed the two pieces together, then I draped my pleats rather than sewing it down. Do you understand? I draped and hung each piece. I was just, and it actually looks very nice. I don't know if this camera is doing it justice. So you can make use of this method instead of this ball. I'm actually excited to try out this one and see how it looks. Now here are the pieces for the bodies. We have the back and we have the front. I've gone ahead to cut out my darts. I added half an inch seam allowance at the base, half an inch at the armhole and neckline, then one inch at the side. The same thing goes for the back, half an inch, one inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, all the way round. Now I have gone ahead to cut out some strips of fabric on bias, which I'll be using to finish up the neckline. You can also make use of facing, but I'm making use of bias strip. I'll be creating piping on the neckline. So I have this piece of fabric which I'll be draping for the sleeve. Like I said, draping, so it is subject to modification, but for now it measures 24 inches in length and 14 inches in width. That is it for the drafting and the transferring to fabric. We'll continue with the sewing process in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. If you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please kindly do that. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends and see you mate. Bye bye.